Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 10th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from London, England. Thanks to our reader Ron for sending us an interesting batch file that actually implements a complete info stealer. Xavier wrote it up and well it shows yet again that malware doesn't have to be terribly complicated. It does target Windows but still uses the curl utility which has been added to Windows in Windows 10. And curl, of course, makes it pretty easy to download uh, files, like in this case, an additional tool to do screenshots and then upload the results back to various websites. In this case, it looks like the attacker prefers to just use the Discord API, which of course is even more difficult to detect because Discord is a very commonly used tool. So requests to that API may not necessarily raise any suspicion. In addition to taking screenshots, as I mentioned, the tool will also collect details from various browsers in order to exfiltrate credentials and the like to the attacker. And just as a reminder, we always like interesting malware. So if you have something, just pass it on. Cloudflare published a blog post with details regarding a new type of DDoS attack that takes advantage of exposed MyCollab and MyVoice Business Edition collaboration systems, which are produced by Mitel. The root cause here is a vulnerability in the TP240 voice over IP processing interface cards. And it is, well, one of those very classical type of UDP amplification attacks. But in this case, with an unheard of amplification factor of one to four billion. You heard that right, it's 4 billion or exactly 4 billion, 294 million, 966. And a single UDP packet to an affected device is able to launch a response, a stream of response packets for up to 14 hours. The abuse service here is listening on UDP port 10,074. And while the number of devices exposed is not all that large, approximately 2,600 of the systems have been detected with the incorrectly provisioned uh, interface. It still due to the uh, amplification factor and the duration of uh, the packet stream is an extremely dangerous denial of service attack. Mitel has released an update that will fix uh, this vulnerability. The vulnerability is being tracked as CVE 2022-26143. And after Russia invaded Ukraine, a uh, call went out for volunteers to help in cyber attacks against Russia. While the entire undertaking was somewhat questionable from an ethical point of view, of course, there have been quite a few of also people new to cyber that sort of wanted to try their hand and uh, play with some attack tools. Well, turns out that the bad guys are paying attention as well. And there are, according to a blog post by Cisco now, a number of attack tools being offered to Ukrainian supporters who are actually then exploiting whoever is running the tool. This entire scheme, of course, is not new, but with the large influx of volunteers here trying out tools and not really being familiar with uh, how everything works, of course, there is now a new set of individuals who may be vulnerable to running these tools. And then we have another good reminder to be careful what content you are including in your websites. Turns out that a number of Russian government websites were compromised and defaced after a counter widget that was included in these websites was compromised. So this is one of those 
call them usually mage card like attacks where an attacker got hold of a website that hosts content that's included in multiple websites and then by compromising that third party was able to in effect not only inject content into users web browsers but also then in the end deface the website that included the content and then a couple of quick items here. Siemens is warning that it did release updates for its RuggedCom ROS. It fixes a number of vulnerabilities with third-party components that could allow an attacker to launch denial of service, to retrieve sensitive information, or to gain privileged functions. And Adobe released updates for Adobe Illustrator, Adobe After Effects, and for Adobe Photoshop. The After Effects vulnerability is rated as critical and affects Windows as well as Mac OS. And well, that's it for today. Welcome back to everybody using Apple's iOS podcast uh, app it looks like the feed is working again and you should be getting the latest episodes as they are published thanks and talk to you again tomorrow bye